All right, we're back. This is Rob Doon. You're watching InfoWars Nightly News. And over here to my right, is my good friend Aaron Dykes. He's fresh back from Dallas and here to talk about a host of issues, including uh, the speech that Alex gave last night. How's it going, Aaron? Uh, pretty well. We just got back just a few hours ago. So Yeah. So, so tell me, how was the speech? A lot of people, there's a lot of comments out there. People seem really psyched about it. I saw some Yeah, photos. the crowd's energetic. I mean, of course, Alex is reaching millions every day on the web and everything anyway and through the radio, but there's really something about the energy of a crowd with a packed house. It was totally sold out uh, in a theater, an old classic theater that seats 800. Great crowd. Everybody there was very well informed, all wanted to talk about the issues, and Alex very passionate, of course, great speaker. Yeah, and you got to introduce uh, Jim Mars. Yeah, I just did a quick introduction. They invited out Jim Mars because he lives in the Dallas area, and you know he's been in our circles for years, and and he really appealed to the crowd as well. And it's really reached the point though where everything Alex and Jim Mars and everyone else has been warning about for decades is right in front of our face. It's not that period of denial of is there going to be a police state or are they trying to control us or or is the whole system corrupt and falling right. on its face? It's yep. rotting right now oh, as yeah. they seek greater control. That's evident to everyone. And so Alex was really trying to focus on how do we bring this thing uh, into a new era, you know, how do we, how do we solve these problems and, and kind of reclaim our nation, our world, everything. So it was like a giant solution segment. In a large way, yeah. We aired the special film we've been working on, right. and we're going to air it again, of course, in Orlando this Sunday. Right. 40-minute uh, film, really, uh, we titled it New World Order. Uh, not Diary of a Madman, but uh, the blueprint of the Mad Men, really just highlighting how crazy they are, mm -hmm. how much control they've taken over our lives, and the dangerous experimentation uh, they've done, risking literally the whole planet, all our lives, you know, willing to sacrifice soldiers, test subjects, yeah. living human beings, everything. And But it's just apparent to everyone who's been following this issue now, people who are still waking up, waking up for the first time, uh, it's very easy to see. I mean, the TSA is right in your face. All of it is. Right. And it starts off with Alex kind of doing his dark parody uh, in the coffee house and moves on, or how did, how did it go? I didn't see the whole thing yet. Yeah, it starts with the, the parody that's been online already, and then mm -hmm. it moves into just covering all the issues, kind of similar material to what's in Endgame, but, but updated with new stuff. The Gates Foundation, of course, yeah, yeah. has become even more important than the Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, we really pointed out a lot of lies and how they've invested themselves in lying in the system, how they've given power to these lies and, and cowards out there, and people in the dark uh, accept those lies and give them even more power. So we're trying to shed a light on that. And Alex really makes the case it's time for that house of cards, that mm -hmm. house of illusion that they propped up. That has to fall one way or another. Because yeah, Bill, if it rots slowly, it's going to hurt a lot more. Right, Same right. Same stuff Ron Paul's talked about. Totally. And uh, Bill Gates seem, seems to have taken the active upper management role in, in making this, you know, especially the depopulation agenda. Maybe not so much in, in the world banking, but depopulation seems to be his main focus. And um, especially when, when you look at, uh, what was it, a couple of years ago, we found out how he was putting most of his new investment into, um, into the gut into the immune system. That's where most of your immune system lies and how to affect that and, and things you can do to that. So that's just, that doesn't spell anything good for us at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's all on the, on the wings of giving and how charitable right. and nice he is. But what he's using his research dollars for is vaccine technology, research into how vaccines affect the gut immunity, mm -hmm. uh, all, the, all the gut floor and the things that happen inside the body. They're studying that specifically as well as things like how to destroy sperm, uh, covertly or, or through vaccine technology and a lot of other really creepy stuff just designed to take over our lives at the individual level right. as they're consolidating us at the global level. Totally. And speaking of creepy, the, uh, the McPetrie that uh, I was looking, I was looking at that article, we covered it earlier, and I mean, that is just you know, okay, it's great that we can grow meat in a test tube, but would you eat that? I mean, absolutely not. Uh, and it's creepy because, you know, at the same time, they're blint, blurring the lines on organic food and GMO right. food, and it's getting harder to find organic food, even as people are finding out because of the deceptive labeling, calling mm -hmm. things natural, when that yeah. doesn't mean that it's non-GMO. Natural doesn't mean anything. But this article is really almost at the soil and green level. It is. You know, of course, where they use people for the food, and, and we're all supposed to eat it, and yeah. It's just such a sick system. There's so much that science and technology could do 
But the way the research dollars flow through these foundations, it used to be the Rockefeller Foundation, the most important one. Yeah. They control the research and steer it towards their own designs. So, of course, all this great technology is used only for control, and almost exclusively. People don't see that because they don't you know, come up with a grant that says, hey, we want to we want to figure out how to depopulate the planet. You know, it, it's with how do we create a sustainable life for all living here on this planet, and, and they're not talking about humans when they talk about all. They're talking about animals and trees, and, you know, uh, humans are usually in the bottom of the equation when it comes to creating the sustainable world where, you know, everything's, I don't know, it's just this, this uh, whole um, en enigma that, that, that they write stuff up in, in these grants, and then people apply for them, and it's all tax-free. So what are you going to get in the end? You get a steered movement, and people don't see it. It's been happening for generations. So, I mean, we've been dumbed down. We're part of that process because we're third, fourth generation in. Well, their world is one set of humans who are building this new world order system, mm -hmm. and then the rest of us who are either dumb sheep going along with their system, giving them power, or the useless eaters that they want to outright kill. But, of course, they're targeting all of us. Right. Yeah, another story we covered uh, was the transistor that was made the size of an atom. Um, I used to work at a, a semiconductor company not too far from here, and I, re I remember when they made the jump from uh, 200 millimeter uh, wafers, and, and, and a wafer, you know, is about this big, 200 millimeter, and they would put chips on it and cut them up. And they, when they went from 200 to 300, it was it was like we had landed on the moon almost. It was huge. Mm -hmm. It was this big breakthrough that was going to change everything. And now. You know, a 300 millimeter wafer, you could get, tr you know, trillions of little atom sized transistors on it. So that even breaks the mold of, of Moore's law, which is the way technology is supposed to double every 18 months. So, I mean, what is greater you think of acceleration? That? Right, right. Well, I haven't had time to look at this in detail, but yeah, it's exciting what they can do. But yeah. nanotechnology, which is mentioned in this article, has a lot of dangerous implications as well. And what why are all these elites in the computer world so into the Bilderberg Group and so into this right. depopulation agenda? It's not just Bill Gates. Yeah. It's the Hewlett Foundation, the Packard Foundation. They're into depopulation and eugenics. Uh, you know, you've got Bill Joy of Sun Microsystems, right? He was the one who wrote the article, Why the Future Doesn't Needing Us, uh, Doesn't Need Us, warning that he was at this elite tech conference and they were talking about that kind of age-old question of do they kill us outright or keep us as pets? Yeah. And that's our future. And <laughs> one of the big Apple CEOs, uh, Wozniak or whatever his name Wozniak. is, he was talking about the same thing, how our future as humans is basically as pets at best. It's, just, it's not a world I want to live in. But everyone's figuring it out. You could yeah. feel it at the speech last night. Yeah. Alex put on a show, but even more touching was all the questions. He took, I don't know, probably 30 or 40 people's questions and answered them. After mm -hmm. the sessions, they lined up on the wings, and uh, among other issues they brought up, a lot of good issues, people were talking about how they were diagnosed with this kind of disease and, and on death's bed, but then they found InfoWars and found natural news and started discovering uh, natural and, uh, I guess, homeopathic and vitamin-based cures for themselves and turned that disease around, got rid of the disease completely or, or at least fought back its effects. One guy had yeah. MRS. His daughter had had diabetes type 1. They're trying to fight it. Another woman uh, had, I forgot what the condition was, she was on death's bed. Then she just removed aspartame for her diet, and even her doctor was shocked at how quickly uh, her symptoms faded away and how she was able to beat the disease she was facing. Well, she was probably drinking three cans of this stuff a day or, or a two-liter bottle every other day. And, you know, it, it's like I was listening to Ben Fuchs on the way in this morning, and, and he's like, you know, we're not curing diseases here. What we're doing with, with mineral supplements is creating a place where your body is so powerful, it can fight off these types of things. It will naturally heal itself. We're not curing anything. We're just creating the body, putting the body back to its its state that it was meant to be. But of course, in. it's not just the body, it's the mind. I mean, we That's have so it. many yeah. higher thought capabilities, but they're limited when we live in this narrow spectrum mm -hmm. and eat this diet that's just made to make us subjugated. And, you know, of course, I've been thinking more about that myself, but you, just, you drive to Dallas and it's no wonder we're so inundated with this. I mean, not only TV, but right. the billboards like start your day with a Diet Coke. Go yeah. ahead and pour yourself a two liter of Coca-Cola. Go yeah. ahead. You earned it. And all these kind of like <laughs> motivating, you, you know, poison pushers, you the man, they're poison pushers. And, you know, it's disgusting what they do. And, you know, this stuff, I don't think it needs to be regulated. I think people need to be educated into it. Because once you start regulating one thing, then it leads, you know, this long line where we have 
regulations on everything. People should be allowed to, to, to drink soda if they want to, but if it's killing them, they should also know about it. Well, I'm not, I'm for uh, arresting and prosecuting where there's crime. I'm not for banning the Council on Foreign Relations. There's still right. free speech even for the bad guys, yeah. but I want their ideas to fall. Our ideas are better, and this awakening that's happening, you could feel it, you could see it. Uh, we want the transformation of greater ideas. That's what we need. And for people to just see that that whole thing's a farce and it's going to fall off on its own weight. Right. And that's the playing field we should all be talking about. We should be talking about, you know, how are we going to move, you know, our race forward? How are we going to explore space? How are we going to, you know, how are we going to, we could, we could feed all the people in the world if we really wanted to. Yeah. It wouldn't be that, it wouldn't, and, you know, we don't have to do it by killing people. We, well, we, I mean, economics 101 under Keynesian is how they destroy food to keep the market prices stable. Exactly and keep people employed in certain sectors. Alex talked or about the green speech energy. last night, too. Yeah. They pay farmers not to grow food. Right. And while well, that whole green revolution was all Rockefeller-funded, yep. all the that monoculturalism uh, really destroyed a lot of real agriculture, and, and rather than curing starvation, it's caused a lot of extra problems. Depleted the soils, it's uh, put a lot of pesticides out there, it created a lot of pesticides that didn't need to be created in the first place, we put them in the soil. that was a 30-40 that was a 30, 40 year phase, now sure. they're in phase two with yeah. the Gates and Rockefeller Foundation, that thing called Agra, that's the initial, mm -hmm. and that's where they're pushing the GMO crops on Africa, the drought oh, yeah. resistant stuff that they all, of course, have the patents on and stand to gain financially from. And if you don't want to, you know, get the seeds and plant their crops, well, here comes the thug squad, you know, with, with, the, with the machetes ready to take action. Yeah, we had people lined up with the questions, too, who had been personally sued or the guy's father had been by yeah. Monsanto uh, because his crops were contaminated and, and now he's in financial burden. Right. And, uh, it's amazing how they do the law. Um, I, I played a video earlier about what's going on with uh, with me in Pittsburgh. I went up there and was trying to come up with a resolution to this. And, and the, the company, the the insurance carrier who is in charge, you know, they they have representatives from the city and, and, and the police there, but they don't have any decision-making power. It's all down to this insurance company. And guess who's at the top of that pyramid? Hmm. AIG, well, that's nice. a company we bailed out, and, and they're going, no, we're not going to do anything. We don't really care about the First Amendment. We're not interested in talking with you. Um, you know, we're just going to try and suck as much blood out of you as we possibly can. It was pretty, pretty disgusting, but... Um, I, while I, Goldman Sachs buys collapse insurance on AIG and plays both sides to make a huge killing. There you go. And, and then why we also bail them out to the trillion, you know, billions of dollars. And uh, it's disgusting. Aaron, um, we're going to Orlando, and we're going to be there um, this next Sunday. And there's the website there. It's uh, Alex Jones Blue Blueprint to Defeat the New World Order. Sunday, February 26, 7 p.m. Eastern at the Orlando Hialeah. I guess that's where they play that interesting sport with the giant hand I rackets. So, I've, yeah. never, I've never seen it live, but it looks pretty interesting. Um, so, yeah, there you can get your tickets um, at that website. You can go to infowars.com forward slash events, and that'll take you to the Hialeah website down at the bottom, and you can get your tickets. Uh, I believe there's still a few seats left. Aaron, then they know? sell out? That's right. Dallas was a packed house, but you know, it's really something to see Alex speak. He really hits his stride. It's one thing to hear him on the radio. That's inspirational too. I've had a lot of personal kind of revelations watching Alex speak at these events over the years. And it really dawns on me that it's not just Alex talking in a vacuum. Like people are responding to this stuff. You meet people at these events, you find out how much they know. In yeah. most cases, even more than I know or Alex knows or anything. I mean, people are awakening. You can feel that energy at these events and you learn from it. You walk away with this greater sense of like, you know, this really is happening. And you take action from there. And, and that in itself is part of the solution, really. Right. Well, it's definitely energizing people. I could tell I've been to a couple of his live events, uh, especially I remember going to see uh, Road to Tyranny many years ago um, at the Alamo Draft House. And he got up. He didn't do a long speech, maybe like a five minute speech, but it really energized the crowd. And then watching that film, especially the Oklahoma City footage with a room full of people gasping all at the same time, like, mm -hmm. We never heard about a second and third bomb. Where is this information? But even more than all that stuff, because that's been covered, we know what's oh, going right. on with that stuff. I mean, Alex is really, in his speech last night, showing people that we do have the power, that we're already having these victories, mm -hmm. that we're already in the process of turning this around. We just have to get up out of our seats 
and activate and do this thing out yeah. there. We already have all the people, and yeah, it's one thing to be a listener and a follower of Alex, but to become an activist yourself and, and, and say, that's an issue I resonate with. I'm right. going to go take action on this. If you're not into this issue, you don't want to talk about 9-11, well, we know the truth anyway. Get out there and talk yeah. about the financial collapse. Get the out GMOs. there and talk about the GMOs. Yeah. That affects there's, everyone. There's plenty of stuff. Fluoride in the water. I mean, we've had people... Just by taking some of the stuff that we've put out, go and show it to their water boards or their councils, and boom, one vote, and it's out. I mean, it's just that easy. I don't know if people really understand how, you know, what's 80% of it's being there. You know, it's, it's just being on the field, yeah. standing there. Uh, we played some clips earlier today on C-SPAN, this, this mouthpiece for the government sitting there talking about how he, he hadn't heard any of this information about Kurt Haskell and the underwear bomber, and caller after caller from all over the country. You know, started off in Austin, then it went to uh, Vermont, and then, yeah, I think it was in Florida, there was another one. And it, they just repeatedly pounded this guy, saying, look, all this information's out there. One guy was saying, I'm disabled, and I found out all this information. They had warehouses of these body scanners, and, you know, all they needed was that one event, and that was the underwear bomber. That was the event to start just... Putting these everywhere, which we're going to have to deal with. Uh, yeah, you on and Saturday. I were at an airport yeah. before the underwear bomber incident happened, and yeah. they tried to make us go through body scans. Oh, yeah. So it was all a hoax, and these radiation machines are statistically killing at least 100 people a year. Meanwhile, the TSA has not caught one terrorist. They let the underwear bomber on the plane. Yeah. And so that's. That's what we get out of TSA and all this other tyranny as they roll in these checkpoints. It's people know what's going on, but yep. it's time to stand up and really say no and, and not give in to this stuff. It's disheartening to see this stuff, but it's great to know that we're out there fighting. There's other people out there who I've never even met who are fighting the fight that we're fighting, and you know it's all about truth, getting it out there. So, thanks for coming it's a tale out. Tale of Aaron. two cities: the worst of times, the best. There you go. There you go. Thanks, dude. And uh, that's all we have today for InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member. You can go to prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com. And we have some great specials there. I think we have 14 days free still offered right now. So you can get on, try it out, see if you like it. And, uh, you know, it'll take you, take you there. We're, uh, we're doing this five days a week. Aaron's going to be hosting the next two nights. And then we got uh, Paul Joseph Watson and Darren McBreen is going to do his second uh, tour, I guess, on the show. So keep watching. Send us your suggestions. I throw out my email on there. I love hearing from you guys. It's, it's been it's been a great journey so far since I've been here um, in early 2009 is when I started working here. And but I, I was an info warrior long before that. So it doesn't. I don't. You know, if I wasn't working for Alex, I would still be out there shooting chemtrails and making videos and and trying to wake people up because that's what it's all about. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow night.